Fujifilm makes some beautiful cameras. They're sleek, they're powerful, they're fun to use. I myself bought the Fujifilm X-M5 for those exact reasons. And I get it, I get why so many people say that a Fujifilm camera just inspires them to use it. Because I felt that way too. I just love bringing this camera around with me absolutely wherever I can. But every new Fujifilm release is burdened by a particular problem. The autofocus performance simply isn't up to the standards of their direct competition. And no matter how many impressive features or benefits you might find in the system, I think that a lot of new photographers, videographers, and creators hesitate to pick one up because of it. For a long time, I was afraid of trying a Fujifilm camera for that exact reason, the autofocus. And personally, as a solo creator who cannot stand behind my camera to make sure that I am in focus all the time, over the last few weeks, I've been exploring different settings, testing out different environments, and for better or worse, letting the X-M5 take the autofocus wheel, so to speak. And as cliche as it is to say that the results surprised me, they did. I'm actually making a very different video than the one that I thought I'd be making when I started this little project here, which is why I wanted to chat about my early experiences with Fujifilm's autofocus, what I've learned about it over the last few weeks while running these little experiments and really trying to pay attention to the results, and then also my overall thoughts after having used the camera over the last, I think, oh, maybe six months? For context, I bought the Fujifilm X-M5 in November, and while testing it out initially, I did notice a few times when the autofocus suddenly drifted away from my face, while using the eye auto detect mode. Thinking that it might be the mode itself, I decided to turn off the face detection entirely and use the area autofocus modes instead. So for the majority of the time that I've owned this camera so far, whatever was closest to the camera in this little box here was what should have been in focus. To be specific, continuous autofocus. And that worked great. The drifting completely disappeared. I filmed a handful of videos on this channel and my other channel, but instead of the drift, I did get some pulses here and there. Most noticeably on my most recent video about action cameras on this channel. After I got done filming and started editing the video, I realized that the angle I filmed at, combined with the low placement of my focus area, combined with a shallow depth of field, combined with the fact that I'm a pretty big hand talker, kept moving the focus away from my face and onto my hands or the camera that I was talking about. Because this area focus mode tells the camera to focus on whatever is closest to the camera, my hands kept telling the autofocus to move. Neither of these were consistent problems for me. I, ta I, ton I filmed a ton of stuff that had absolutely no problems with it. But this did inspire me to dig deeper into my settings and kind of challenge my understanding of autofocus in general, and then specifically the autofocus controls or settings of the X-M5, which led me to running a handful of tests in search of the best autofocus settings for what I do specifically. Because I knew that my understanding of autofocus in general and my settings in the camera were partly to blame for some of the inconsistencies I was getting with the X-M5. So I set my default autofocus mode to area and started experimenting. I changed the continuous autofocus custom settings, face and eye detection modes, depth of field, lenses, and even the environment, with the ultimate goal of dialing in my settings and understanding these variables to hopefully get better, more consistent results. Which when it comes to my use of autofocus is mostly talking head and explanatory shots. So, I started the experiments in my office with clear shots of me just trying to get a feel for the autofocusing modes, the speeds, and the reaction times of the autofocus at different depths of field. I also tried moving the camera to a slightly messier environment to see if the autofocus would try to grab anything else in the frame, like my mug or the books. 
I then moved on to film a handful of videos for my other channel out in the wild exactly as I normally would, but actually using the eye detect autofocus the entire time, something that I wasn't doing before. And finally did a long shot last minute in dim lighting, hoping to see if the poor lighting would make things more difficult for the autofocus, as I do think it struggles to focus if it's overexposed. But instead of going over the entire about two and a half hours worth of footage, I wanted to highlight my key takeaways and observations. This might be obvious to a lot of people, but it was actually new for me, and that's that there is a chain of autofocus. If you're using eye detection, the camera will search for an eye. If it cannot find one, it will look for a face. And if it cannot find that, it will default to focusing on whatever is closest inside the selected focus area. Pretty much all of my current knowledge of cameras and recording and editing has been learned run and gun on the go while actually making stuff. So I do find once in a while when exploring and making a video specifically like this one, I discover these little gaps in my knowledge that might be a lot more obvious or learned earlier on by a lot of other photographers and videographers and just creative people in general working with cameras. But I guess that's just a side note. <laughs> I don't think that has much to do with the video. Over the last six months or so, the area autofocus without face detection on did work pretty well for the most part, but it also led to some understandable confusion. It wants to focus on what's ever closest in the green square. So if I was using, say, a shallow depth of field and my hand was hitting that green target, the focus would shift. I also tend to step away from my camera to talk a lot, so if I wasn't in the center or I missed the square for some reason, the focus could pulse as it tries to determine what should be in focus or miss me entirely, which in the long run for a solo creator does make this mode less reliable. Unlike the first couple shoots I did with the camera last year, when I experienced that drifting of the focus, the eye and face detect both worked great for the most part. The focus followed my eyes when there was a clear subject and didn't get confused when there was more going on in the shot. So while I started these tests by comparing the area focus to the face detect and the eye detection modes, I realized that the face detect and the eye detect did so well in comparison that I decided to do the rest of these tests just with eye detection because it was already doing really well. And throughout all of my tests, there was actually only one instance when it really did drift, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Over the last few weeks, shooting completely with the eye detection on and not really being able to discern any real issues actually gave me a lot of confidence in the autofocus and its accuracy and consistency. So I actually went in and turned on the eye detection mode as my default for my custom one button on the XM5, which is what I use for my talking heads. But one way to make the entire system overall better is to really dial in the custom settings. On the XM5, that allows us to change two key aspects of performance. According to Fujifilm, the tracking sensitivity is a parameter that determines how long the camera waits to switch focus when an object enters the focus area behind or in front of the current subject. The higher the value, the longer the camera will wait. I found the middle to be a pretty good place for me. I do want the camera to kind of grab me and keep me in focus and not really readily jump around. Speed tracking sensitivity, according to Fujifilm, is a parameter that determines how sensitive the tracking system is to changes in subject velocity. The higher the value, the greater the precision with which the system attempts to respond to sudden movement. And this is where I found the camera to struggle the absolute most in all of my testing. Though the autofocus and the eye detection did a pretty good job at finding my face and tracking it around the scene, it really struggled to smoothly keep my face in focus when I moved quickly towards or away from the camera. But this is, of course, all relative. 
with the speed tracking sensitivity set between 3 and 5, and an f-stop of around 2.8 or higher, I found the results to be much smoother. I personally set my tracking sensitivity to 3, as I don't really do a lot of walking up towards the camera or even around the frame. I don't really want the focus to be too aggressive in trying to recalculate, so to speak. And if anything, I do a lot more swaying than I do aggressively approaching the camera. Overall, I found the autofocus throughout these tests and over the last couple weeks to do a great job, especially in these situations, in a variety of situations, that I would actually use the camera in. Which is why after filming all of the experiments and going through the footage, I decided to have one final test. I was actually writing the script for this video and thinking, I wanted to stress it out one more time and just face the camera on me while I continued to write this script and let it run for over 20 minutes, specifically in dim lighting. And there was a significant pulse after minute 20, followed by a brief loss of focus. But after a couple hours worth of footage now, maybe close to three or three and a half, I have to admit that the autofocus really did perform better than I thought it would. I don't know what causes these pulses and drifts. I'm not sure if it is the lighting, the long film times, a lack of contrast, or something else entirely. Since it hasn't been a consistent problem, I haven't been able to put together a pattern. I admit that after the first couple focus drifts I experienced early on, I quickly wrote off the eye detection autofocus entirely, and then came to these experiments with very low expectations. But paying attention and running these experiments in my own shooting style has actually really improved my confidence in this camera's autofocus in general. And so while writing the script, I started to wonder if my attachment and appreciation of the XM5 in general might influence how I feel about the autofocus. I also think that because my autofocus was literally on the floor for this camera, it really had no choice but to impress me. I used the Fujifilm X-T20 for a while, in which the autofocus was truly frustrating. This is definitely better, but I don't think it's on par with any of the competition like Sony, Micron, or Canon. But then again, I don't think anyone's rushing to a Fujifilm camera for the autofocus. And I do think there's a lot of shooters who would love this camera. One of the strongest takeaways I have from this whole experience is that no matter what camera I have or use in the future, getting to understand how the autofocus works and dialing in some of those custom settings can really improve the overall performance of the autofocus. Especially in regards to the way that you actually shoot, because everybody's use case for their camera is unique. My biggest concern with the autofocus going into these tests was actually consistency. In the couple talking head videos I've filmed recently, the accuracy has just been spot on, but I have had a couple random hiccups. I don't think that's particularly terrible, especially for a non-professional use case, but it still hurts my confidence in the autofocus overall, because if there's a pattern and I know a specific thing is going to stress the autofocusing system, I can try to accommodate that. But if I don't know why the drift is happening or the pulse is happening, then I can't as accurately find a way to work around that. Truly, I'm the one who ruins the majority of my shots. And the fact that I'm filming in the back of my car today is proof of that. Because when I was filming this video yesterday, I checked the mic, still working? I looked at the camera, I did a little test to make sure my bars were moving, that I had audio. Ba -ba, yeah. Proceeded to sit down to continue my little monologue here, and then accidentally pulled the cord out of the mic receiver. So I had no audio for that entire take, which was my longest and maybe best take, which is unfortunate, but here we are. But I am now at the point where I can kind of tell if I'm the problem or the camera's the problem, and 99% of the time, it's me. I just have that self-awareness now because I understand the camera so much better, I can kind of clue in myself to what I most likely did wrong, like pulling the cord out of the receiver, 
or setting the autofocus box to low and right where I like to talk with my hands. However, with that being said, Fujifilm targeted the creative niche with this camera. They positioned it to compete inside an increasingly competitive creator space, added vlog modes, vertical modes, and decent microphones. They specifically pointed to a group of camera users who rely on autofocus and said, this is for you. We made this for you. So I think it's really fair to be critical of Fujifilm's autofocus not being up to par with its competitors, especially in the XM5. And I think that Fujifilm does need to invest more into its autofocus if it wants to target this niche, because this is an expensive camera and a competitive market. And that leads me to my final question, or perhaps even request of you. If you've gotten the XM5 or another camera that Fujifilm has released recently, I'd really appreciate it if you shared your experience in the comments. What camera you have, how the autofocus has worked, if there's any modes or settings that work better, and what those settings work better for. I think that we could use a better dialogue of kind of what's working, what's not working, and a variety of different shooting applications because I think that we need a little bit more of that. And hopefully if anyone's looking for a recent release from Fujifilm, then the comments and the discussion and the discourse can help them decide if the autofocus is enough for their needs or not. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you got something out of it.